Let's have a session on Bowman's strategic clock. So much like Porter's generic strategies, this is a tool to show the available options there are to a business or its managers in terms of positioning strategies. And it's going to be positioning strategies in terms of price and perceived added value. Now, it's called a clock because there are eight positions on the clock you can be at with respect to price being uh, low and high and respect to perceived added value being low and high. And there are eight times on this, hence it's called a clock. Let's just go through each of the eight times. So the first is time number one, which is low price, low added value. Low price, low added value. So the only way to make profit out of this position is really to generate massive volume, massive volume. So you need to be whacking down on those economies of scale so you can drag down your average unit cost. And point number one, if it's a really low perceived added value and it's a low price, it's very likely to be an inferior good. So you're thinking about your income elasticity demand and it's going to be negative. Now, number two is here in terms of still like one extremely low price, but more perceived added value. The customer feels like they're getting more value out of this product. So it's not so much an inferior good as to more a normal good if we're thinking about income elasticity demand. So numerically, we're thinking of a number greater than zero, likely to be somewhere between zero and plus one. So low price, you can much relate it to cost leadership in terms of Porter's generic strategies. Check the card out there. So we're thinking about really trying to, in order to get that price low, we need to be efficient within our business, so high efficiency, and also using those economies of scale. Now, strategic clock position number three is, um, is here, and it's referred to as hybrid. So we're thinking about modest prices, because we're more towards the low end of the scale, but high perceived added value. So this is going to be good quality goods, good quality goods at roughly decent prices here. And so if you've got a loyal customer base, you will be successful here. So it may be important to have some form of brand image. Number four is differentiation. Differentiation being here, so high perceived or the highest perceived added value to the customer and at a medium or modest price. Now, in terms of this, we're thinking about in relating to Porter's generic strategies and the differentiation column of that. And it's going to make sense if you're doing it to mass market. So you are unique within a mass market. Slightly different to position number five, when it's not so much about differentiation to a mass market, but to a niche market, because it's focused differentiation. And you're referring to the fact that you've got high prices, you're further along this side, but you also have relatively high perceived added value to the good, probably because you're targeting one segment. Um, the last positions are six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight are seen as undesirable, and really they're seen as destined to fail strategies. Because when you think about them, you're essentially charging a high price and the perceived added value is pretty low. So it doesn't make sense to be in those positions in terms of the clock. However, if you are a monopoly and you're one seller in the market, then you may well be able to get away with that position. So I hope that helps on Bowman Strategic Clock, and I'll see you for the next session.